In this tutorial, I just want to introduce you to the timecode effect, which can be used to create burnt in timecode, which can be great for producers and editors to be able to give frame perfect edits what I want and what I don't want between this point and that point. So you wouldn't use this in the final product, but you would use it in the production process. And because the timecode effect can be applied in multiple different ways and can be moved around, you can have two timecodes or more showing at any one time, depending on whether it's the timecode for the whole clip, whether it's the timecode for the media, whether it's the timecode for the whole timeline that you're working on. So let's just have a little look how I would apply it to this timeline. So I've got a whole timeline here. So say I want to have the whole timeline give me a feedback, a burnt-in timecode. I would use probably an adjustment layer in CS6. So I need to create a new adjustment layer. So I can go to the new items icon down here and click adjustment layer. And yes, I want it to be the same size as the sequence. And then I can click and drag and drop it on top of whatever's in my timeline and simply trim it out to the same length as my timeline. And then I need to go to the effects tab and look for time code. If I don't know where it is, I can simply type time code. And by the time I've got there, you'll see it's under video effects, video time code. So I can grab time code and drop it onto the actual adjustment layer. And you can see time code has come up. And I can click on that layer and then go to my effects controls and I can start to play around with it. So do I want, for instance, the field symbol or not? Sometimes the field symbol is useful, sometimes it's not. And particularly seeing it originally came up, I don't know if you saw under NTSC with the, the semicolon as opposed to the colon, it does seem that when you turn field on and off, you can actually get it to go to the, the colon for PAL. Um, but that can be useful actually to differentiate different types of time code. We'll come to that in a minute. Clearly you can move it, so you can have it up and down wherever you want to on the, the actual screen itself. And you can change the opacity, not of the time code itself, but of the box surrounding it. So you can make it more or less, depending on what you need to see. My advice is always to have something dark around bright, because should you have very bright footage underneath here, you won't be able to read it because it will drown out the whiteness of the text. Whereas if you have a black background, you'll always have a contrast that you can read at all times. And clearly you can play with the size, so you can make it bigger or smaller. You can also choose what format you require. Now obviously we're working with time code, but you can go for frames or even feet and frames 16mm, 35mm. We're going to stick with time code. And we can obviously work with the time display. We are at 25 frames per second. Mine is PAL. But if you're NTSC, are you 30 frames per second drop frame or non-drop frame? And also you can see you've got frame rates for slow motion or higher frame rate pieces of footage and 24 for the more documentary type productions. So you can play with the frame rates, but obviously you choose the one that is right for your footage and it's automatically chosen it's 25 because that's what my sequence is working in. Then you can choose to look at the time code source. And really what we want to look at is the clip or the media. Now on this particular layer, you're not going to see any difference and also generating, we're not going to see any difference because this is an adjustment layer. But when we work on a piece of footage, say I work on this seagull's piece of footage underneath, and I apply the time code effect to that one, so I can double click because that's selected, and you'll see that I've got a second one, and I'm going to just physically shift it to one side, so we can see which is which, and you'll see that that says it's at 41 minutes, 51 seconds, and 11 frames. And if you look at the time code effect, this is for the clip here, the seagull's clip, you can see it says media. So this is the time code from the original tape that it was actually created or filmed on. This was filmed on an HDV camera onto tape. So we can choose to actually look at the original media timecode, or alternatively, we can choose to look at the clip timecode. So you'll see that there are different timecodes at this point. I've got where we are in the whole sequence. We're at 57 seconds and five frames. You see that down here, reflected here. And on this particular clip, we're six seconds in, or if I want, I can turn around and say, well, what was the original media value? And that can be very important. Some people work from the media of the original tape, so I can have that showing as well, so I can be frame perfect when I need to go and select something. Now, obviously, if you've got multiple layers and you've got multiple different pieces of footage, the time code effect can be applied in different ways. Just remember which one's applying to which. So if you've got one for the whole sequence, you might have it in the middle, and then you might have a clip one side. You can have the time code effect twice on the same clip. So for instance, if I select this one here and I copy and paste it, Control C, Control V, I've got two versions, and it's doubling up here, and I can move the second version across to the other side, 
and I can change the second version from media to clip. So now I have for this seagull footage, I can see from the adjustment layer where we are in the sequence, I can see where we are on the original media, where it was on the tape, and I can also see here where we are on the actual clip, we're just six or seven seconds into the clip. So you see the time code effect gives you the ability to be able to play around with all sorts of different approaches, plus you've even got labels. So you look down here, we've got labels, we can take it to automatic on this clip, you can see it says MDA, media, and if I take the second one down where it says none, and I take that to automatic, it's going to say clip. So you can actually have it labeling media and clip, and of course if you are working with multiple cameras, you can specify which camera you're working on which can be extremely valuable. Now the only other thing to say is you also have an offset here and a starting time code if you require to use it. So you can offset it plus and minus however many frames that you need to go by should that be a requirement and even a starting time code you don't have to start at zero. If you're saying well I know that I'm going to have five seconds worth of something going before this therefore I want to add five seconds in you can actually select it let's go on this particular one on the um, adjustment layer and I can say well I actually want this to start at five seconds so I do five point enter you can see that it's starting time is five seconds so if I actually come to the very beginning you can see it starts at five seconds because I know five seconds of something is going to come before that and yet when I still come to this seagulls one I can tell what the media time code is the clip time code and the time code for the whole production so you'll see that the time code effect when you really need to know your time codes for editing decisions your producers working with timecode, you can add these in, you can just render out low quality versions which have got timecode so people can make the right decisions at the right timecode, give you the timecode and you can get on and do the editing and then obviously when you're ready to do your production you simply turn off the effect because you don't need it anymore. So that's the timecode effect.